All right, so it's been a little bit since I've been able to spend some time with the car. Um, started to get a couple more parts in. I got the turn one pump in. I got my uh, surge tank in. And now I'm going to start mocking up some lines, get the water pump set up for the AN fittings, and get, get it tapped out. And then if I have time, then I'd like to get the cradle um, ready to go on, just mocked up get the turn one pump on, get the AN fittings for it mocked up on the steering rack, and then I'll go from there. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm going to pull the ports off of the water pump. Power by Ocho. These off, this is a half inch tap, that's a three eighth inch tap, all pipe thread. Uh, we'll get these off, get them tapped, and uh, we'll get the AN fittings put on there and then that'll be it for the water pump. All right, so I've already got this clamped on. I twisted it around a bunch. Once you get that done, then you can start kind of uh, rocking it back and forth. And this one came off pretty easy. This is a fairly new pump. Uh, I like to use these vice grips just because I don't, you can use like pliers or whatever else you can, but as you can see, it'll start to loosen up. The other thing that I can do that works pretty well is I'll use a hammer and just kind of hit it this direction and that kind of helps the uh, move it around a little bit so just doing that kind of frees it up a little bit and it'll come right out so these are pressed in that's why it's a little bit more difficult to get out and once it's out, it's out. And then we'll move on to this one here. Put that to grip on it. So that's already spinning, so that's good. Let's break it loose. All right, then and I don't know if you can see, but it's already started to, it's already starting to come out. And it's out. All right, so once those are out, you'll need a 3 8 inch tap, and then you'll need a half inch tap. Now, um, I got these from Amazon. I'll put the link in the down below in the description. And then once that's tapped, I have some uh, fittings here. I'm gonna do a dash six hose uh, to to the surge tank so I have a half inch to six and I have a three-eighth uh, MPT to dash six so I'm gonna put both of them on this one I'm gonna leave on just so that I can cap it off that way if I need access to it I don't have to worry about it later uh, so it'll always be there uh, and so I'm gonna get that tapped get that cleaned out. I'm gonna get the thermostat out of the housing real quick because that's gonna be in the way. You don't wanna get all those chips inside of the thermostat and we'll go from there. All right, my water pump is a little bit different. I have this billet piece for the thermostat housing uh, and that's because of the radiator kit that I have from G-Speed. Uh, they give you this water pump that has this housing. Now this might have some water in it still nope it doesn't so thermostat comes right out it's in that housing they want to reuse that same thermostat so i'll leave it in there so one thing you want to do when you start tapping this is you want to make sure that your tap is going to be um, level or straight so it's not cockeyed basically so you're going to want to get it started and really chuck to make sure that that 
that tap is going in there straight. It might take you a couple times, but that looks good to me. I'm gonna just get it started and then I'm going to back it out and then I will add some cutting oil. Now I don't have a tap handle that's big enough for this tap. All right, so that's gonna be nice started. Make sure we're still level. Yep. So I don't have a tap handle, so I'm just using a 13 millimeter wrench. So let's go ahead and back this out. We should be able to put it right back in now. So do a couple turns, back it out, clean it out, just do it all over. All right, so that's about three quarters of the way through. What I'll do is I'll take it out, clean it up, test it, make sure that I'm gonna get a good, nice flat seal. And then remember when you're using pipe thread, you need to put tape on it or paste. I'm just gonna test fit this before I put any tape on it. And of course my AN wrench doesn't fit this one. All right, so I only got about two turns through there. So I'm gonna go ahead and thread it more. So as you can see, I only got to about right here. I wanna at least get halfway in there if not the full way. All right, so that one's done. Uh, that's the half inch one. And I can pretty much get the Get in as far as I need to um, before it starts to compress on itself. Once I get some tape on there, I think it's going to be perfect. So we'll move on to the 3 8 inch one. Again, this one's going to be capped off, so I'm going to use a um, 3 8 to dash 6 and just cap it off. You could just throw a 3 8 inch plug in there. Um, I'm just going to do it just so that I have the ability to, if I need to do something to the system, I can tap onto it or not later. Um, without having to pull a plug or anything. All right, so we're gonna do the same thing. Get this so that it's lined up nice and straight. All right, that looks straight to me. So as I said, you got to use tape or paste. I use tape. Whatever you want to use, use. All right, put the last one in. Snug it up. All right, so if you're wondering now why I threaded that, uh, the surge tank that will be running is a 32 ounce, so it's a one quart 
CNR um, surge tank. It has um, a 3 8 inch here that I'll put a 90 uh, 3 8 to dash 6, and that's what will go to the um, half inch dash 6 in the front by the thermostat area. And then uh, from the steam ports on the heads, uh, we'll have, they'll, they'll merge into one and go into this side. And then on the other side, this is what will go to the top of the radiator. And hopefully between all of that, this is just a um, level, a fluid level um, indicator. Uh, if it ever fails, you just cap it off and then you just don't have that straw there. But that's what's gonna happen. So I'm gonna put a 90 in here. I'm gonna put the eighth inch to uh, dash four here. I need to get a cap for it. And then once I get the motor in place in the car, we'll make a mount that goes on the firewall and this will sit on the uh, passenger side firewall. And um, that'll get rid of that expansion tank that's in the front of the car uh, stock. It also will carry less fluid than the stock one, which is fine. Uh, I don't think we'll have any cooling issues with the car. So this will be perfectly adequate for, for what we're trying to accomplish. All right, so MPT, MPT, MPT. Again, you have to use tape or paste. I use tape. You can use paste, you can use tape. Don't use both together. All right, so I made a mistake and I got eighth inch. I needed to get quarter inch. Anyways, how this would work, I'm gonna have to order some. You would stick both of these in here and then that's gonna be for the steam vent of, uh, from the heads, or, and then this would be the um, radiator. That's okay, I don't need that today. Uh, this was just to kind of get things going and moving forward. So that's gonna be the um, plumbing, uh, the initial plumbing of the cooling system. Several days later. All right, so the other thing that we're gonna to address today is also water pump so earlier we did the um, fittings and we tapped the water pumps so that's going to be a 45 to a 90 that's going to be the bottom of the surge tank and i made a bracket here and then this is a dash four that goes to the vent ports and then this is going to be a dash six line that's going to run all the way up to the uh, radiator that's up front here and all right, so this is a pretty long run. This is the one that's gonna go from a 90. Let's get it on here. I don't wanna yank on this because it's not crimped. So um, this is gonna follow along here. And then it's going to terminate right about there. So that's where we're gonna put this one. I'll mark that. So we'll bring that one right about here. I'll put a piece of tape on it. That way I can mark the tape and cut it. sit nicely right about here all right so we'll cut that one here and then this will be our next section and the next section that we're going to do is going to be a 45 to a straight so with these um, crimp style fittings that BMRS has the thing that I like to do is I leave a piece of tape on here and you got to make sure this isn't too much. So usually just one layer because uh, it's a very, very close um, tolerance. So any more tape than that, you're not going to be able to fit this over. So once you make your first cut and leave the tape on so that you can get the sleeve over. And because I have 
another terminate inside. I, I went ahead and put both sides on. Obviously, this one will go that way and this one will go that way. That way, when I get to this side, I can cut it and then I already have the sleeve on. Now, the um, thing that makes this so bendable, again, you can see how flexible that is without, I mean, it's not even, look at this. So anyways, um, I don't know if you can see inside, but inside it's a corrugated style of tubing. And because of that, it's able to flex onto itself without binding up and uh, doing anything like that. So. The first side is going to be the 90. Now with this also, you need to buy, and these are 50 bucks a, a pop. So you have to have the different size expanders. So it's not too bad. So you can make your own hoses. Uh, and then you're gonna lube these up. And that way what happens is the, um, it's an expander. So just like the, the word means. You're just going to screw this in. It's going to expand the hose, twist it up until the end of the, the threading. And you'll see that it pulls some of the hose out. Now, that part's going to get cut off. So take the expander out. And then you can take the tape off because you're going to have to slide this up. Now, you slide this up until it's about right I'm back onto the stainless. And then you're gonna trim the hose so that it's flush on the, um, I can't find my knife. Where did my knife go? Oh, in front of my face. So you're gonna pull this up and you're going to tuck all that stainless line back in there and then you're just going to trim this up. Now, uh, and this is what gives you your flush cut on the fitting. And this stuff cuts pretty easily, so you don't have to worry about um, needing like a, a crazy shirt. So right here, as I'm running into some of the stainless steel, so I just keep a pair of flush cutters with me, and then I just kind of clean it up with that, and it seems to do the job pretty well. And then once you're here, then your fitting will go right on. You'll slide that up, and then this goes up over the fitting like that. Now, because I'm mailing these off, what I'm doing is I've, I'm taping this so that it doesn't slide. And also I'm labeling it crimp so that they know that, you know, I need that part crimped. So for our purposes today, I'll be putting a piece of tape on it. And if you're wondering why, that's why. And then, like I said, I'm just labeling this with crimp. Now we'll bring this to the car. And we're going to want to measure our, um, oh, this is a straight. So you just pull this right back off. Just pull that down. Pull this off. Put this straight on. And we can pull this back up. OK. All right. So, like I said, I'm labeling these crimp, so I'm just going to put this on here. I'm going to seal it up, and then they know that it's the crimp side. Now I'm going to put this on the car, and then I can measure for the 45. All right. Test fit it on. how that one will go. Get these together. Power by your old show.